My name is Imani Harris. I am a fourth year here studying English with a concentration in creative writing, and I'm the president of Never Let Your Pen Dry, a spoken word organization on campus. Anytime I come home from college, to be honest, man, I'm hurting. Who knew that more education would feel like a burden? I'm just sitting, looking at my city's position and wishing that these colleges gave out more money for tuition, and I'm wishing. And after getting involved with the organization, um, doing a lot, few of their writing workshops and going to their open mic nights on and off campus, I kind of realized that maybe I should switch to a different major that would accommodate more of my creative side and my interest in English and things like that. So I switched my sophomore year just because I really needed that type of environment and the creative writing courses and the workshops provided it for me. I just wanted to kind of write for people who did look like me and who did need someone who could share their voice and bring a platform to it. That I could change the system with the visions I've been having in my mind, but honestly that stuff takes time and I don't know if I'm that patient. I'm waiting for the days that I'll be writing dissertations, putting letters by my name. Look, my only competition right now is myself, so I'm just battling my demons while I'm dodging everyone else. The saying that I change, yeah, I know. When you go into the community, um, spoken word is, it's more of an informal form, and the point of it is kind of to destigmatize a lot of the beliefs around what type of art is acceptable in spaces like this. You can call it change of growth. Whatever one you prefer, I'm gonna get the life I deserve. I'm working so hard, so I will never be a statistic. A good poet that I met uh, named Denez Smith, who the English department brought, um, they said that if you're a good poet, you should be able to tell when you say it out loud, and also when you say a poem, like when you see it on the page. And for me, I knew I didn't have any page skills. So I was like, I could convince you here, but like, how do I convince people if they were just to look at the poem itself? I'm looking at my city and I swear I'll make a difference starting in the community. The struggle is nothing new to me. So a big focus of the organization is um, to first get people like aware that spoken word is a form of poetry that should be seen as legitimate um, because a lot of our poets use a lot of the same tools that you would find in an English class. I'm working so my children will never have to see the day they work 10 times harder just to get paid 10 times less than a white man sitting at a desk. But honestly, I say I'm blessed to even be in this position. Uh, the Department of Social Change has an opportunity every semester for students to volunteer to work at one of the many sites that they have. That point is to work with incarcerated youth and to mentor them and to make sure that once we come in there that they will have the tools that when they do re-enter society that they can be more productive in their communities and to create just positive awareness. I swear I'll make a difference. I'm looking at the sky and I don't think that it's the limit, so I'm pushing past every opportunity I'm given. I'm trying to make a better living, not for myself, but for my children. And yeah, I know I'm just one girl, but I swear to God one day that I'm gonna change the world. Look. We do writing workshops with them where we analyze hip hop lyrics. And instead of just thinking of hip hop as this like, oh yeah, this is just them doing this thing. It's analyzing the words and seeing how there is poetry and poetics in it. And I wouldn't be able to do that if I wasn't an English major. She was asking for it. She knew what she was doing when she put on that tight skirt. Crop top so high that it's barely a shirt. See, I'm a man, what you expect me to do? Respect her words. See, society says I don't have to, so I put my needs first. So fuck her. Literally, that's what I'm about to do. Spike a drink and give it to her, telling her it's just juice. Hoping that this drink will give her enough juice to move over to the dance floor. The way she's dressed would suggest this is exactly what she asked for. And as we dance more, I move my hands more up her skirt to the point where we're not dancing anymore. See, we're past the dance floor. See, we're past the crowded campus. Now we're closer to my dorm room, hoping that the people who see us will just assume that she's another drunk girl, not someone who's about to get raped by me and a couple of my dudes. See, we like to tag team. We like to have sex after one time asking because that first consent is really all we need. And who gonna stop us? Not this society that constantly displays rape culture on the movie screens. Who will it be to get the message to these men and these boys that sex is not an automatic thing you do. It's a choice that women get to make. But when you're drunk, you take their voice away and blame it on the choice they make to go outside wearing tight clothing. Say your emotions were running high that you couldn't hold it. Police would rather blame the victim than to put these men in holding. It's so crazy how this world started unfolding. Hold it. Let's fast forward to the future. New baby girl in your arms. How will you introduce her to the world that will try to reproduce her into a sexualized symbol using drugs to seduce her? Seduce her. Let's call it what it is. Rape. A cycle with no escape. Will you watch her be a victim, letting clothes choose her fate? Watch her clothe and self-hate. How much more can you take or endure? 
while these men close the doors and your daughter becomes a victim of what she was asking for. 